air conditioning, a comfortable bed, satellite TV, sports, diet and W, indoor plumbing, a beautiful sunset over the water. These are just a few of the superficial things that I value in my life. Of course, I have other things that I value. I value our church. I value my wife. I value my friends. I value my kids most of the time. I value all of you, each and every one of you. That's right. And I'm sure you have your own list as well. And over the last four weeks, we've been talking about our values here at Riverway. And what makes us tick? And what are the things that are important to us? And so we want to say welcome. Thanks again for being here and for watching online. If you've got your message notes out, we're going to be doing some of those today. And uh, before I get into it, I just want to say uh, yesterday we just sent off 21 teenagers and leaders to Oklahoma for a missions trip. And so if you think about it this week, will you be praying for them? Uh, It will be a great trip, no doubt. And maybe next Sunday we'll get to hear from a few of them. Well, we're going to jump in because, you know, as we talk about values, they're so, so important because they help us stay focused on the things that are most important to us. And today is about the last three values that really are all about our relationships and our sense of mission here at Riverway. And so we're going to jump in right away with number seven. And if you missed the first six, I encourage you to get online. You can watch those back. But number seven, we value small groups so that through relationships, no one does life alone. That's right. We value relationships. We value small groups so that through relationships, no one does life alone. And I think if there's anything that the year of COVID taught us, it taught us that we were meant to be in community with one another. Isn't that true? Uh, We were not made to be isolated and separated from each other. And that's why it's our belief that as the church gets larger, it also must get smaller at the same time. And a lot of other faiths, in fact, when you look at it, the more holy you get, the further from people you get. You know, the monk, the shaman, the guru on the mountain, they're all distancing themselves from others. While Christianity, and in Christianity, God expects us to live among and serve and do life together. And we see this early model that was happening in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 46. And it says this, that every day... They, the followers of Jesus, continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And throughout the New Testament, you see this model of people growing together in relationship and growing together spiritually. This was so important and so important for our faith today. In fact, this is a model for life-changing and a spiritually transforming community. It's really about doing it together, and it's why we value small groups here at Riverway. And I think one of the most beautiful things about small groups is when people begin to trust one another, when people begin to care for one another, that when a need arises or a crisis arises, you have a group of 10 to 12 people who are willing to jump in and be there for you. And so with this last year of COVID, obviously our small groups, right, they went in the tank for a little while. We were trying to figure out how do we do this? And as we ramped towards the fall, we knew that we needed something. And so I was paying attention to the sports world. And if you were paying attention to any baseball or basketball or any of those, you saw that they were creating these sports bubbles. Do you remember that? Where it was like, this was going to be your bubble. These are the people you're with. You kind of don't hang out with other people. And we're going to try our best to keep you safe throughout that. And we thought, well, why can't churches have bubbles, right? Uh, And so we came up with this idea of that we would do house churches together and that we would create our own church bubble for you with the same 10 to 12 people. And all through the school year, you'd be able to meet together. And what we did not know is that something beautiful was about to take place. Deep relationship, maybe going through one of the most difficult years for some of you. For others of you, it was a mountaintop year, right? It was a great year, but you got to share in it all. And instead of the 10-week semesters, this was the whole year together and relationships went deep. And we heard from so many groups that said their group was so impactful to them and they asked if they could keep going even after the year was up. And uh, we have some pictures there that you're seeing of of some people that sent in some pictures. I mean, these, these were groups that were so meaningful 
to us. And so much so that we decided to change our model of small groups for this fall going forward. And so you'll be hearing more and more about this, but coming up this fall, we're going to have you, again, create those groups, and you're going to do it for the school year. You're going to commit, and every other week, meet together, take a little break around the holidays. But this is going to give us time to really go deep with one another, deep in relationship, deep in trust with one another. Our goal for this next school year is quality over quantity. We know that we can develop a lot of groups, but we want to make sure that these groups are being impactful to our lives. And so you're going to hear a lot more about that as we get going. But here's your next fill-in. We believe that in community, people care for each other, they pray for each other, they challenge each other, and grow spiritually with each other. And can I tell you that when all those things are taking place, when there's care, when there's prayer, when there's challenging, when there's spiritual growth, that all equals life change. It really does. It equals life change. And so you're going to hear us talk about how circles are better than rows. Circles are better than rows. Ryan, what do you mean by that? Well, on Sunday morning when you're here, you're sitting in rows. And this is a great way to learn. We actually call this our, our worship and learning environment. It's a great way to do that. But to apply and to live out the things that we're learning, it really best happens in circles, in groups of people that are desiring to go in the same faith direction, to talk about what God is doing in your life and to encourage one another on that faith journey. And so here's my challenge to you, that, that you would decide this morning that as we talk about things in July and August and as we ramp towards the fall, that you would decide to attend a group together. That you would decide to make a commitment, to make it a priority for you and your family to be a part of a group. And here's my promise to you. Here's my promise, because this is something that we value as a church. We've got to keep leaning in on relationships and community. Here's my promise, that at the end of next school year, if you feel like you didn't grow or you didn't connect, um, if you feel like it was just a big waste of your time, I will personally refund some of the time back to you by volunteering our youth pastor, Levi, to come do some yard work at your house. <laughs> How does that sound? That, that seems like a fair trade-off, right? Some of you are already thinking up projects, right? And I'm just going to dive this small group into the ground so I can get some free yard work. Yeah, I can see the wheels turning. Uh, but this value is important to us so that through relationships... Nobody does life alone. We've seen plenty of people over the last year that have done life alone. And it's not been a good spot for them. It's not been healthy for them. And so we recognize that as a faith community, we have to keep growing in relationship. Well, number eight, the next thing we value is partners instead of members. Partners instead of members. Now, over the last several months, I've been starting to get these mailings from AARP. And to be honest, I'm a little concerned about it because I'm only going to be 43. And I, I'm like, I, I, listen, you must have the wrong birth date for me. Like, I am not getting older. Uh, th this is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of offensive. But with this AARP, they're saying, hey, come and be a member and let us tell you all the benefits that you're owed as a member. And when we started Riverway, we knew that for a lot of churches, they used this word membership, and it wasn't something that was going to define the people that were a part of our church. We knew we needed a different word because that word membership, it has this connotation that I'm owed something, right? That we think the focus is on what I receive because I'm a member versus what I give, much like being a member of AAR. How many of you are a member of AA? No, you don't have to raise your hands. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't put you on the spot like that. But I've seen this played out time and time again in churches all over the country where you have church members that leave a church because they didn't get to vote on the color of the carpet, right? Or they didn't get to vote on whether or not they were going to fix the leaky roof, you know? The church just did it, and all of a sudden, oh, man, I should have had a say in that, right? And on and on and on. It's so easy for a church to become inward-focused. And the old church model of membership left people thinking that being a part of church was solely about their opinions, their preferences, their comfort, their choices. But Jesus would say, hold on a second. That's not why I came and died. I didn't die so you could fight over the color of a carpet. 
Come on. I died so that lost people could be found. And in fact, I think Jesus would say, your next fill-in, that if the church would start spending as much energy outside the church as they have inside the church, the world could be changed. If we'd spend as much energy inside as we do outside. And in fact, I think that's why a lot of you are here. Because you know that Riverway has always been a, a church that's been about people on the outside, not just those that are already here. Because it's my personal belief that once a church gets only inward focused, God gets uninterested really fast because he sent his son to die for those that aren't here yet, those that don't know him yet. And so as we consider this model of the kind of church that we are, we believe that it is best modeled through partnership. And all throughout scripture, you see people that joined forces and came together to do something significant for God. And it's no different than all of us here today to say together, we could make a difference that would last for eternity. In fact, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 and 12 tells us this, that two are better off than one for they can help each other succeed if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. It's this idea of togetherness. It's through small groups. It's through partnership instead of membership. Then we say, come on, we're gonna accomplish something great for God together. Because we know this, your next fill in, we know that we are stronger together than we are apart. We are stronger together than we are apart. And I gotta tell you, as a pastor, partnership is helpful because it lets us know who's on the team. The people that have raised their hands and say, Ryan, you can count on us. We're here to serve and we're here to give and we're here to attend. We're here to contribute to small groups. We're here to bring our talents and our abilities, which we'll talk about in a moment. It's so important to know what team you're on for you to have a home base as a church. Not to be orphaned and not floating from church to church or place to place, but for you to say, listen, I'm a part of this church. This church is my family. It's my home and I'm gonna put some roots down right here. And so I wanna challenge you to let your life count in a significant way by joining a local church that will help reach people who are far from God. And if you've never considered partnership, you've not made it official, that Riverway's your church, I wanna encourage you to do it. Don't let anything hold you back. Yes, you can still be Catholic, Methodist, and Lutheran and still be a partner with Riverway, all right? God will not hold it against you. And no, you do not have to be perfect or have your life together, or guess what? Not a one of us would be in the room. None of us. But it really is about us joining together. It's about you joining with the global church to help people find and follow Jesus. And so our next partnership class is at the end of September, coming up in just a couple months. And if you want some more information on your connection card today, just check that box that says partnership or write the word partnership, and we'll get that information to you. We hope that you'll consider that because this is a value that is so important to us that we are partnered together to do all that God has called us to do. And then lastly, number nine, our last value is this. We value everyone using their gifts and resources to help others. We value everyone using their gifts and resources to help others. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever done anything extraordinarily helpful for you? Was there ever a moment in your life that someone stepped in and they helped you with something that you couldn't have done yourself? One thing it reminds me of is our block of blessing that just happened a month ago. And we have a few pictures that you're gonna see of some of your beautiful faces at work. But here on this block, we transformed seven homes in a day. And this block happened to be in a part of Champlain where the homeowners were older and, and things had, had begun to slide on the outside. They'd given up on some landscaping, given up on some exterior uh, things they had going on. And yet our church was able to stand in the gap 
And over 150 of you showed up for all days worth of work. I know you, you don't even want to do like eight hours of work in your own yard, but we're all happy to do it in someone else's yard, right? We showed up, why? Because there was a difference involved. There was meaning involved as we got together to help people in our community with no strings attached. We paid the bill for every house so that we could be a blessing to them. And why is that? Well, that's what followers of Jesus do. It's who we are to be. In fact, Paul says in Ephesians 2.10 that God has created us for a life of what? What are those two words? Good deeds. I mean, think about this. Maybe you've never thought about this in your life. But part of the reason that you were created by God was to live a life of good deeds, which he's already prepared for us to do. God designed you to make a difference with your life. You were put in your mother's womb to help make a contribution to the world around you. We weren't just created to consume resources, to eat and breathe and take up space and build our own personal kingdoms. That is not the only reason that you live we exist for those around us. Our good deeds, our service to the world. And whenever you serve others in this way, you're actually serving God. You're actually doing it as unto him. And you're fulfilling part of your purpose. And so I want to begin by thanking all of our volunteers who consistently do good deeds around here to make Riverway happen in our community and inside this building every single Sunday morning. And I know you've heard us say things like, we couldn't do this without you. And I know over time that can begin to sound trite, but literally, we could not do this without you. We couldn't. Everything you're doing is making a difference. In fact, those that have attended, there are people whose marriages and whose friendships and whose relationships with their kids, their financial outlook, their spiritual lives, and eternal destinations are forever changed because there were some of you that raised your hand and said, count me in. I'll use my gifts and my resources to help. And it's my belief that when Jesus instructed Peter to build his church, he envisioned a church where every single person was using their gifts, their talents, their time, their money, all of it together to build the kingdom of God. And I love this mental picture in Ephesians chapter four, verse 16. Look at this. It says this, from him, from God, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Now, this is an important verse, and so I'm going to have us all read this out loud together, all right? And so we'll take it slow, nice and easy. But everyone, I want someone to hear you around you. You ready? Here we go. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So Jeremiah, who is our executive pastor, I used to be his youth pastor 20-some years ago, and it was a long lifetime ago, it seems like this. And I remember one time, Jeremiah, he was a high school student, and him and a few other guys thought that they would jump me, and they wanted to, like, wrestle, and they just thought they could beat me. And, you know, we were probably talking smack, whatever. And I probably was always saying, none of you could ever take me down, none of you could ever take me down, and they decided to gang up on me because they couldn't take me down one-on-one. -on -one. Well, on this particular day, Jeremiah was on my back, one guy grabbed my leg and I pulled Jeremiah around and I threw him as hard as I could. And in that moment, I tore my meniscus in my knee and I instantly hit the ground and I was like writhing in pain and they thought I was joking and so they're still pounding on. And I'm like, honestly, for a moment, this is for real, I'm injured here. And uh, I ended up having to have two surgeries on my knee to repair the meniscus. And I'm still a little bitter about it, to be honest. And uh, I let him know quite frequently that he still owes me, right? Uh, now, here's the thing. 
How silly would it have been for me to say to my arm, arm, would you just go do what the meniscus does? Would you help relieve that pain? Hey, knee, while you're down there, could, could you bones do the part that the meniscus is supposed to do so that I can be relieved of this pain? Obviously, that would be so silly. But the truth is, my meniscus played a role that could not be replaced by any other body part. That was it. And in the same way, every single one of you have gifts and abilities and talents that God has brought you here on purpose. He's brought you here for a reason because there's nobody else that can do your part. It's you. God in you and God through you to build something that is bigger than ourselves. I mean, could you imagine the impact the world that we could make as a church in the world if we all committed to use our gifts, our abilities, our resources to reach more people for Jesus? And on an individual level, I gotta be honest, it seems overwhelming. On an individual level, there's too many people to reach. The community's too large to reach. There's too many people to bless. But when you join your gifts and your abilities and your talents and your resources with a few hundred other people, the difference that we can make is real. And how foolish it would be of us to say to someone else sitting next to us, why don't you do the work that I'm supposed to do? Why don't you play the part that I'm supposed to play? No, that's not how God designed it. Remember, we just read this verse that from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Every one of us have a role to play. And here's the truth. The truth is that the times that I look back in my life that I have felt closest to God have been when I've used what God has blessed me with to help other people. It's when I felt closest to him. And I think part of that reason is that it was how we were designed. It's how we were hardwired. And it's the example that Jesus gave us everywhere he went, he healed the sick and he fed the hungry and he met practical needs in people's lives every before they claimed him as Lord. He did it to bless those around him. When he saw a need, he met that need and it's what he desires from every one of us. And in the Old Testament, there's a book called Isaiah. It's my favorite book in the Bible. In fact, my youngest son, Paxton, his middle name is Isaiah. After this prophet, and a prophet is someone who God uses to speak to his people. And in this particular instance, God was looking for someone to deliver bad news to his people. And here's how Isaiah responded. Isaiah 6, 8. He said, then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here was Isaiah here am I, God, send me. Here am I, God, send me. Now, Isaiah responded the same way that I would have responded if God said, I need someone to make a DQ run. I'd have been like, here I am, God, send me. I'll be your vessel, I'll be your guy. But God was asking him to do something incredibly hard and incredibly difficult, and yet Isaiah still stood in that place and said, God, you can count on me. I'm here. I'm here for you. And it wasn't enjoyable for Isaiah. In fact, I don't even think he wanted to do it, but he understood the importance of being obedient and available to God. And here is the spiritual truth that is so important for us. And if you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this. And it's your next fill-in. That God cares more about your availability than he does your ability. He's not looking, saying that you've got to jump through these hoops and you've got to get through all these books of the Bible and you've got to do all X, Y, and Z. No, no, no. He just wants to know, is there somebody that would step up and say, God, here I am. You can use part of my life. I want my life to count for something that is bigger than me. I want it to count for eternal things. And I'm willing to give of my time, my talent, my treasure. I'm willing, God, to be a part of it. And so God wants to know, are you willing to build his kingdom? 
Let me ask that a different way. Can God count on you? That's a big question. And some of you might be in a spot where you go, Ryan, I'm not sure I can answer that. I'm not even sure that I'm following Jesus. I feel like I'm on this faith journey. And I want you to know that if you're here and that's you, thank you for being here. And thank you for your honesty and your willingness to lean into faith. But for those of us that claim to be followers of Jesus, can God count on you to help build his kingdom? And another reason this is so important, if you call Riverway your church, then you're a part of this family. And this is not a newsflash, your next villain. Healthy families serve each other. Healthy families serve each other. You don't have to grow up in the Cleaver household to know that healthy families serve each other. My oldest son is 14 years old, and there are certain things that we expect of him around the house, like cleaning up his room, cleaning up the bathroom after he's done, hanging up his towel. Every day they have zone chores. They've got to do a couple zone chores, and then once a week they have some deep cleans that they got to do. And um, I mean, could you imagine if, if my son came to me and said, Dad, I just want to thank you for trying to involve me in this family but I am really busy right now. I mean, summer is kicking my butt, okay? I have bikes to ride. I have dollar store snacks to buy. I have Dairy Queens to visit. I've got swimming holes to swim in. And now, I'm just not really in a place personally where I can commit to this family right now. Uh, now, I'm not trying to offend you. I love it here, Dad. Uh, in fact, I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to keep living here. I'm going to keep sleeping here. I'm going to enjoy the food and the shelter and whatnot, and I appreciate that. But just don't be pushy about me helping around here. I mean, honestly, Dad, it's getting a little offensive. See, that would not go over very well in my household because I believe in groundings from the Dairy Queen, from the swimming hole, from the bike rides, from the friends, right? Right? I mean, how silly would it be for my child to come and say that to me? And in the same way, I mean, we laugh about but in the same way, there is no I'm too busy clause in the family of God. Because the truth is, every single person in this room is busy. And some of you that are retired, you're more busy than you used to be before you were retired. <laughs> Everybody is busy. Everybody has a lot on their plate. But you're in the family. And so we help the family. That's what God's calling us to do. Galatians 6.10 says, As often as we have a chance, we should do good to everyone, and especially to those who belong to the family of faith. And it makes me think of all of you that are faithfully serving currently in our kids' areas or as an usher in guest services on our tech teams, on our worship teams, or with our youth or Team Yummy serving food. I mean, there are so many people that are already serving. And it's what makes this church function. You've gotten a hold of that value. First Peter 4, 9, and 11 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So let me ask you as we get ready to wrap this up, for this last value about using our gifts, our abilities to further God's kingdom, how are you doing stewarding those gifts in your church? And if you aren't sure where to begin, I want to give you three quick things that can help you use your gifts and talents. And the first one is this, attend fifth Sundays. Four times a year, whenever there's a fifth Sunday, we cancel our morning services and we do an all-church community service project. Helps us put a stake in the ground to always be mindful of those who are around us. And at the end of August, it will be our next one. And I'd love for you, as we begin talking about that, for you to jump in. It might be cleaning a school. It might be cleaning a park. It might be making a difference in a homeless shelter and a food opportunity for those that are under-resourced. We're going to have opportunities. And at the end of August, that's a great way to jump in. The second one is to volunteer for community events. 
Like Family Fun Fest, we've done a year without our community events. And this next year, we're gonna be able to re-engage those. So this fall in September, we're gonna do Family Fun Fest, the largest free carnival in the Northwest Metro that we put on. We'll need everybody. Block of blessing that we just got done doing. Father Hennepin Days, where we hand out free pop and water all day. The Easter egg hunt for the city, where we just come alongside the city and say, we wanna be a blessing, we wanna help or sports VBS in the summer. I'm telling you what, we need to link arms together. There's so many opportunities for us to serve one another. And then lastly is to serve on a ministry team here on Sundays. And you should have gotten a card that looks just like this. And I'm gonna ask everybody, if you would, would you take this out really quick for me? And just show me that you have it. If you need one, would you just raise your hand and I'll have an usher come and bring you one. If you need one, you could just raise a hand and an usher will come. But this, is, this lists all the ways that you can serve here at Riverway on a weekly basis. And on the back of that card, I just wanna read through those real quick so you can see. You can serve in our kids' preschool area, which is birth to five years old. We have kids K through fifth grade. We also have kids' main stage that if you don't mind a little public speaking and can do some lessons for some kids, we provide the content. And we just need some people with some gifts and abilities that can do that. Maybe it's a youth group leader. Every Wednesday night, our youth group meets. There's 50 or 60 teenagers that are looking for some leaders that will just be a voice of love and care in their life. You don't have to be hip and cool and with it and know all the jargon and lingo. You don't have to. You can just show up and serve. Maybe it's our setup team, 6.30 a.m. on Sundays. Maybe you'd be willing to sacrifice an hour of sleep and get up with us and help prepare this environment for people to come in. Maybe it's our teardown team that after everyone leaves, to stay and tear down everything and put it away. Maybe it's our guest service team, greeting, guiding, helping new families as they arrive. Maybe it's our parking lot team being a friendly face, adding some security outside and inside the building. Maybe it's our usher team, helping with bulletins and seating and offering all those special things. Maybe it's our production teams that help with video or audio or lighting. Or maybe it's on our worship team, maybe you play an instrument or you sing. But every one of us, we have time and abilities that we can step up and say, God, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to help. Here I am, send me, God, just like Isaiah said. And if you're not serving somewhere here at Riverway, I wanna encourage you to do that. Typically, that's on an every other week basis. And so I'm gonna ask you to fill out this card and in the giving stations in the back, you can just drop it in there on your way out. But if you'd fill out your name and at least email address, we'd love to contact you about where to serve. And on the back, you can just check one, two, or three in preference, order of preference if there's a few that seem interesting to you, that would help us tremendously. But it's a part of our value here. And I promise you that the more you serve others, you'll not only impact their lives, but your life will be impacted as well. And really, it's where you build relationships. It's amazing how much relationship you can build when you're doing setup and tear down or serving in kids or a greeting team together. You build those relationships with the family here at Riverway. And with every single step you take, whether it's you're stepping into small groups or partnership or serving. With every step of obedience, God is forming you into becoming more and more of who he wants you to be. There's new levels of maturity and growth that he's leading us into. And it's because of our obedience, one step at a time. And so these values, as we bring this whole series to a close, all of these values keep us connected as a church to all that God has called us to. And I've been praying for you this week, whether you're watching online or you're here inside the building today, I've been praying for you this week that there'd be something in your heart that would cause you to lean in, maybe for the first time. That you'd say, God, you can use my life. You can have some of my time. These abilities and gifts that I have, I know they're from you and I wanna contribute it back to the kingdom of God. Not to just build my kingdom. God, I wanna build your kingdom here on earth. So would you do me a favor and just close your eyes all over this room as we get ready to pray? And I just wanted us to take 30 seconds. Maybe God is, wants to say something to you today. And it won't be an audible voice. It'll be just something right to your heart. And maybe it's something he's pushing you on. Maybe he's challenging you in. Maybe it's a step he wants you to take. And today I want us to just take a moment to say, God, we're willing to do what you're asking us to do. And so show me what that is. Come on, you and God, 30 seconds. Let's do that and then we'll pray. Heavenly Father, 
we want to be obedient to you. I thank you for your faithful love that you refuse to leave us where we're at. But you want us to continually be taking steps toward you. And so today, whatever you just spoke to our heart, whether it was about being involved in groups and relationships, whether it was about partnership and putting roots in a church, whether it was about giving of our time and our talents, I pray that we would be obedient to you. That you remind us by your spirit all throughout this week the importance of being a part of your global church and building your kingdom. And I pray that our heart's cry would be that of Isaiah. That would say, here I am, God, you can send me. You can use my life. And as a result, God, you are going to help us grow more and more into all that you have for us. So we're grateful for that pushing, for that love. Do it in us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.